bevels are annoying to deal with and can cause massive shading issues. So the question is, can we just model without bevels? Let's have a look. The short answer is no. We need bevels for many reasons and here are the main four. Realism, reflections on planar shifts, controlling the mesh mainly for sub D, and avoiding artifacts in renders and game engines. Before I break these down, if you want to learn about bevels and hard surface modeling in general on a practical example, you should grab our free hard surface jumpstart for Blender course. It will guide you through the entire process of creating a hard surface model and much more. The link is in the video description. So let's get back to our bevel issue. Number one, realism. The number one reason why you need bevels on your models is realism. Everything in real life has a bevel, even the sharpest knife that you can find. Bevels differ in sizes, but they are everywhere. So to create realistically looking models, regardless of what it is, everything has to have a bevel. But not just any bevel. The key secret ingredient to great modeling is the size of bevels or chamfers and the way the bevel sizes complement the purpose of the model. For example, this scanner device has aluminum elements and the tiny bevels emphasize the type of material used. So small bevels make this device look high tech since they require more precision to manufacture. Regardless of what you create, make sure that you run different sizes and types of bevels on your models. If you run the same size of bevels on every edge, your model will look boring and unrealistic. The same bevel size also equals to amateur or lazy modeling, so be careful. You know, quality takes time and patience. It also requires knowledge. Properly sized bevels will show not only that you know how to deliver a quality model, but also that you, you know, did your research. Here's a good example. The bevel sizes differ dramatically depending on the type of material used. Usually, soft materials like rubber or foam will have softer bevels than for example metal or plastic but not always like i said it also depends on the purpose of the model or even modeling stuff for example sub d will mostly have supple bevels and boolean workflow has more sharp edges lastly when you model make sure to think a few steps ahead now what i mean by that consider what materials will be applied to a specific area as this may indicate bevel sizes and their types. Now let's talk about reflections and planar shifts. So we need bevels for planar shifts and reflections. Now what are planar shifts? Planar shifts are angle changes between planes or surfaces. If you look at this example, you can clearly see that the light which shines from one direction interacts differently with flat surfaces. The reason why it happens is that the angle of the light is different on all of them. This angle dictates the reflections. These reflections are instrumental for emphasizing the shape and design language of your model. Now, planar shifts are a superb way of detailing your models without adding any details. The light itself will create them via reflections. So you could have a very simple model with almost no detail, but still looking interesting in certain lighting conditions. A beveled edge will catch any reflected light differently than a sharp edge. And since in Blender, all sharp Sharp edges are infinitely sharp there is zero reflection now this is why I like to use cavity feature when I model you know I usually turn it on via the hard ops menu with alt V shortcut and the link to hard ops by the way is in the video description but you can also turn it on in vanilla blender top panel and just you know tick the box on your set. now the cavity will allow you to see edges more clearly and therefore the whole form of the model will be more defined in the 3d view Viewport. This will help you achieve better results since it kind of fakes light falling on edges. Now number three is controlling the mesh and it's mainly for sub D. Bevels are a great way to control subdivision surfaces. In Blender this can be done either with edge loops or creases. Now edge loops are a traditional way of controlling sub D but they add additional topology which can cause issues with shading and change the overall flow of sub D surfaces. So you can create chamfers or 
or bevels by adding loop cuts and sliding edges closer or farther away from one another. This will broaden or tighten the bevel. Since sub D is mostly used for organic and soft surfaces, the bevels should mostly be supple and large, but it depends. If you're modeling car, for example, things are a bit more complex. Soft bevels are mixed with very sharp transitions and pinches. Car designers have mastered the balance of these two types of bevels, so car modeling is a great way to practice that. And the last one is avoiding artifacts in renders and game engines. So bevels will prevent artifacts from appearing in the renders and game engines. Now light doesn't like infinitely sharp edges and they can cause glitches. This is why baking bevels in game asset production is the quickest method but not the best one. Mid poly modeling meaning applying one segment bevel to a model plus the custom split normal in blender case it's weighted normal modifier is a much better way. Sure it will inflate the overall topology but with current hardware and nanites in Unreal Engine 5 the panic of high poly count is almost over. This is why in our Game Asset Course 2.0 for Blender we used mid poly beveling instead of bevel baking. However, the bevel shader, which is the same concept as bevel baking, is still a great technique to use for renders provided that you do not get any artifacts. Simply go to BSDF matte settings and add a bevel node. Just remember to view it in cycles as it will not work in AV or 3D viewport. The bevel node is a shading trick so it's an illusion of a bevel but it works very well especially when the bevel is small. Now bevel nodes are fantastic for quick renders and can save you a ton of time because you don't have to clean topology or worry about some shading issues caused by bevels. Now our add-on material works has that feature built in. You can add materials and bevels with one click without going into the node setup even once. I'll add a link in the video description so go ahead and check it out if you're interested. To sum it all up, yes you do need bevels. They are part of every single object in reality so adding them to your model can only improve them. The trick is to know what sizes and what types of bevels to add and how to use them to enhance the design language. Working from references comes in handy here. Every single pro out there uses references. There is no way our brains can remember all those intricate details of real life objects so gathering and studying references is the key to creating successful models. Everything is down to practice so keep it up i'll see you in the next video